There's a slew of articles out today fawning over the growth in the stock market. Raw Story explains, quote, The Dow Stock Index climbed above 18,000 for the first time ever Tuesday after government data estimated third quarter U.S. economic growth at a spectacular 5%. They say, at 5%, U.S. growth for the third quarter was the best since 2003. The figure described as mind-blowing by one analyst was also better than the 3.9% previously estimated by the government and the 4.3% projected by analysts. So, what they're saying is, not only do we have economic growth, we have it far surpassing anything any expert has ever said. GDP is through the roof. The stock market is through the roof. This is basically like the roaring 20s all over again. Now, what's the problem with that? What followed the roaring 20s again? Hmm. 1929, stock market crash, and then the Great Depression. Now, here's the problem. The mainstream media acts like the stock market is a true indicator of the economic well-being of your average Joe in America, and it's just a fact that it is not. In fact, let me give you the specifics. Take a look at this chart here. For everybody listening on the live show, this is the distribution of U.S. stock, bond, and mutual fund ownership. And the top 1% owns... 50.9% of the stock market. The top 1% owns more than half of the stock market. Now, when you add the top 10%, another 9%, so it's in total the top 10% into that picture, that's another 39.4%. So, uh, overall, what is that? 50, 60, 70, 80. About 89, 90% or so? So the top 10% owns about 90% of the stock market. Now, when we talk about the bottom 50%, they only own 0.5% of the stock market. And when you talk about the 50th percentile to the 90th percentile, they only own 9.3%. So when you look at the stock market, what you're looking at is a representation of how the economy is doing for the rich specifically for the top 1%, but if you want to broaden it out a little bit, maybe for the top 10%. For everybody else, it's not really an indicator at all. So you have that problem, plus you have inequality is continuing to grow. And to give you some specifics on that, the top 1% owns 42% of the nation's wealth. That should be mind-boggling to anybody anybody anywhere of any political affiliation or ideology. The top 1% owns 42% of the nation's wealth. That's a large chunk for 1%, isn't it? Now, they also uh, take home 24% of the nation's income. So they make 24% of the nation's income. And to give you perspective on that, at a time when the U.S. was the fastest growing economy in the world and we had a middle class that was the envy of the world, the golden age of economic expansion, that used to be just 9%. It used to be that the top 1% made 9% of the income. Today, the top 1% makes 24% of the nation's income. Now, what happens when you get that out of whack and when you have this genuine imbalance in the system? Well, what happens is the middle class and the poor cannot afford to pay for the products that are made by these so-called captains of industry. So eventually the jig is up. How are you going to continue to have economic growth? How are you going to have people that continue to consume when the middle class and the poor are getting squeezed to the point where they can't consume anymore? Now, there's two reasons why the, uh, the numbers today for the economy are, are so good. One of them is that gas prices are low, so that's essentially a de facto tax cut for the middle class uh, and the poor, but that's not permanent. That's not going to last forever. And the other thing is that it's Christmas shopping. It's holiday season shopping, and that's not going to last forever either. But we always have, or I should say the mainstream media and the analysts, always had this short-sighted view of the economy where when something when some numbers and some indicators are trending in a positive direction, what do they do? 
They go, Yahoo! Things are gonna be perfect forever! Yes, we finally fixed everything! When again, the reality is not that, and it's nowhere near that. Now, on top of those problems, I haven't even discussed the fact that we have over $1.2 trillion in student loan debt, we have a trillion dollars in credit card debt, and we have a $700 trillion derivatives market, which is totally unregulated. I mean, this is madness what we're talking about here. The derivatives market is the wildest, most casino capitalist bets you could ever imagine. They're bets on top of bets involving side bets and this and that. And nobody really knows what the fuck they are or what they're doing. And what do they tell us? They say, it's okay, don't worry, because the guys on Wall Street understand because they're the smartest guys in the room. Oh, so you're telling me they're saying the same thing that they said when they were uh, screaming about how the subprime mortgage bubble will never burst because th they're the smartest guys in the room and they understand the subprime mortgage situation. They didn't. They were exactly wrong. The bubble burst. And then we had the Great Recession. And now you're telling me the same thing when it comes to the derivatives market. So, hear me and hear me well. This is not genuine, sustainable economic growth. It's, just, it's not real, and that's the most important point. Wages have been stagnating for Americans since 1980, and all the new wealth that is being created is going to the rich. So when the government rushed in and did the bailouts and did the stimulus during the Great Recession, and then didn't also properly regulate, because Dodd-Frank was a joke and then now they're repealing it provision by provision, when they did that, essentially what happened is they re-inflated the bubble. The same bubble that popped in 2008 and uh, left us with a subprime mortgage crisis and a great recession. That bubble has now been re-inflated. And at some point, I don't know when it is, but at some point, it's going to come right back down. And we're going to be back in the same place that we were in 2009. And in fact, it may even be worse. So hear me now, quote me later. People act like the times are good and they're never going to be bad again. <laughs> they couldn't be more wrong. The economy will go down again, and when it does go down, it's going to be painful.